So kicking off with the Paddy Power Gold Cup, uh, Catherine, I believe that uh, you've got a, a big priced, uh, interesting uh, contender for, for this one. Yeah, and I mean, he's not a huge price. He's a double figure price. He's a 16 to 1. Very interested in the chances of John Spirit. Obviously, we saw him win here on Saturday. He's only gone up £10 for that. He came into that race on a rating of 129, gets into the Paddy Power on 139. You'd think that that is going to put him sort of fairly low down the weights, possibly carrying around the 10 3, 10 4 mark. This horse was running with credit all last season on horrible ground. Uh, he sort of, and then he, he carried on. He, went, he ran at both uh, the Cheltenham Festival and at the Aintree Festival. He's, he's very tough. We saw him come here on Saturday. So it, running again quickly wouldn't be a concern there? Uh, oh, no, right. not at all. I mean, he, he dropped, he was running last year over distances between two mile four and three miles and a half. We saw him win here on, on Saturday over the two, two mile four and a half trip. It was, you could call him the winner from about three out, really. and. I think he's absolutely thrown in. Be my selection for the race. Thank you. Uh, Dan, uh, Martin Pipe uh, traditionally, and now David Pipe, the Pipe family as a whole, got a very good record in the, uh, in the race. And possible uh, likely contenders. Seems to have been a little bit of money for Baron de Gore this, uh, this week. Uh, would, uh, would they be sort of uh, in your list of potential contenders? Yeah, to be honest, when I ended last season in the Baron Gou play, I thought straight away Baron de Gore was going to be one for it. Uh, if you look, Additional trial for the Paddy Power as well. That yeah, yeah. I think the, the thing is with Bally Nagar, I was looking at his form earlier on. If you look at his, uh, when he won within 40 days, his form reads 7 1 6 6 9 8. 40 days plus, his form reads 2 1 2 2 1 1. Uh, if you look at his uh, form last year when he was winning at Warwick, uh, he canted all over the field there. I think obviously the the trainer was caught between a rock and a hard place. He wanted to get him at Cheltenham with him winning the Burn Group plate last year with Salu Flo. So obviously they needed uh, to get a win into him. But obviously if you get a win into him, you take out that advantage of being best fresh. So it's, like I say, a rock, a rock and a hard place. But this year, I know in the stable tour, uh, Matt, sorry, David Pipe did mention that Salu Floor is possible as well. But for me, it's all about Bally Nagar. He's got form on easy ground, which given the, the forecast or given the rain we've had in the last few days, I can't imagine it being uh, good. Or, well, any any quicker than that anyway. So the the trip's going to be no worry. The ground's going to be no worry. And like I say, it's just got the right profile uh, for the Paddy Power Go Cup. Thank you, Rory. Uh, Simon Sig's likely to be the uh, top weight in this uh, in this race. Uh, will weight uh, will that weight stop him? And uh, what would you see as being the positives and the the negatives around his chances? Um, I don't think the weight will stop him per se. I've uh, worked out where the weights for the race would be if he if he runs and it's easy enough to work out um, how to reframe that if he if he isn't running in the race and th the big issue with him at the moment for a short priced favourite is that he's not guaranteed to go for a handicap first time out and he's also high up the betting for the King George as well he wasn't overly impressive in the way he won the Oracle but everything he'd done beforehand both over hurdles and fences was impressive um, and he deserves the, the big weight he might have in the in the Paddy Power so I think he's um, he's the obvious one for the bookmakers to put in towards the head of the market. Um, but we'll see if he heads in that direction at all. If you knew he was to run, would you say current sort of price around about five to one would represent value? Uh, no, I wouldn't say it would represent value. I think I think it's a it's an obvious starting point for the for the books. But um, having scribbled down likely runners in this race and what sort of weights they'd be on, um, there are a few who stand out a little bit more than he does at the weights. For all, he's he's clearly a class act. Dave, uh, it's difficult this uh, this stage with the weights not due out until the 29th, I, uh, I believe. But have you got uh, your eyes on any horses in particular? Uh, yeah, as you say, it's obviously there's a degree of guesswork involved until the weights are, are actually thrown and we know uh, who's get, definitely going to be running. Um, two at this stage that I would probably be keeping a sort of a close eye on more than any others uh, are Kitenko uh, from Venetia Williams's yard, who took the eye on more than one occasion last year and at one stage was sort of touted up as going to be a Gold Cup horse. Um, simply because he's a Gold Cup horse and he looks to stay, it doesn't mean that he's not going to have the speed to win round here over sort of two and a half miles come November. And I think um, a bit of cutting the ground, which is something I know myself and Rory have talked about what the ground is going to be, you know, because it's been a fairly dryish summer, but the rain is starting to come a little bit now. I think if there was just some, some cutting the ground, Katenko, who's already beaten one or two of the others, they're going to be lining up for this, notably John Spirit. I know John Spirit's been mentioned up a time or two. Um, he put John Spirit to bed quite nicely, I thought, at Sundown. And 
I thought he'd be one that would be progressive again this year. Takes it around Cheltenham as well. As I say, already sort of proven around here, so that's always a plush. I always look for something that's that's proven around Cheltenham. So I thought he'd have. Um, I thought he'd have an excellent chance. Um, the other one that I sort of took against him, I thought first time up, if, if he ran again, would be would be Balin Agor, who's. A bit of money this week. Yep, a um, little bit of money from him at the beginning of the week. Uh, and the, the reports that Mr. Pike was giving uh, in the racing post at the beginning of the week were all sort of, uh, were all sort of quite positive. Um, again, I know myself and Rory sort of dis- disagree a little bit on this. Rory thinks he might have a bit of a hole in him. I'm, I just think first time what might be the time to catch him. Um, I was there the day at, at, at work when he absolutely took nice on Frankie and the rest of them to the cleaners and he looked a whole some immense potential. I know he went up an awful lot in the weights after that. I think he went up about £22 after that. I'm not necessarily sure that that was what stopped him. He, he might just have he may just have come a bit soon for him after that. The race may have come a bit quick for him. I'm more than happy to give him another chance this season. Bit of a hole, would you like to elaborate on that? Yeah, well, I thought, I don't think the weight, um, the weight rise necessarily did stop him at the festival, but I thought after travelling as well as anything in that race, he cut out very quickly, which suggests he's a horse with a problem there has been a, a rumor that he's um he's broken blood vessels in the past and although there's no confirmation that happened to him in march um it does suggest that he's he's delicate at least uh, but the point dave makes is that he's probably best caught fresh and um they needed to run him at warwick in order to get him into a handicap at the festival in the first place and maybe doing that and going to the well quite quickly at the festival just saw him burst a little bit whether that's literally or, or metaphorically um to give you an idea where he sits in the weights for this if simon sake runs um, I'll, I'll give you both of uh, Dave's uh, selections there. Katenko would have 11 stone 7 uh, by my reckoning and Bally Nagore would have a very attractive looking 10 stone 6 in the handicap so you can see why he might just be the, the pipe horse mm. for the race and the chances are with him and um, we'll talk about our father at some stage as well. Those yeah. are both horses are probably best caught fresh. So given the, the record that the pipe yard has in this race over the years, um, I think he's, he's clearly going to be a buzz horse coming into the race. You mentioned uh, Gift of the Gab there, Rory, a possible entry for the, for the Paddy Power. How do you rate his chances? Well, he's an interesting one. Um, he, he was another horse who'd been off the track for quite a long time after his novice season. He, he came back and ran in the Kerry National at the stool and I thought shaped very well for a long way. Um, was just weakening when he made a mistake at the last and ended up finishing sixth the White Star line and that's an interesting form line because both of those may well head for the Paddy Parr. Uh, Gifted Gab strikes me as being on a very good mark. He'd have 10 stone 2 if um, if Simon Sig ran in this race unless the um, the English handicapper decides to fiddle around with his mark a little bit um, and that's a, that's a tempting weight for him because the, the drop back to two and a half miles would actually suit him down to the ground for me. I don't think he, sta- I don't think he would have stayed three miles anyway at Listowel but he'd be better for the run and he's um, He's an interesting lurker down the bottom of the weights, and I don't think many bookmakers have him on their radar, to be honest. Um, the horse that beat him at Listowel, White Star Line, has run well at uh, Cheltenham in the past, run well at the festival, and although he's gone up in the weights for that, he's another one who'd be perfectly happy dropping by to two and a half miles again, and he wouldn't be out of things either. Um, but to be honest, depending on how these weights pan out, and there is the vague possibility of Fleming Star still running on the race, which would, mm. which would mean that mean. everything would be pushed down the handicap a little bit. Um, the horse towards the head of the weights that makes most appeal to me is Raj Danny. Express, who I put up as one to follow for the season earlier on. Um, he won that novice handicap in March despite top weight and his jumping was fantastic as it was again when he won at Air in April. So he looks bomb proof and I think he'd run a cracking race. So would those be your two, Rajwani Express? And- uh, Rajwani Express, and then it depends. I mean, I, I'm not sure how many of those towards the bottom of the wits will be in the race, but the likes of, um, of Gifted Gab and White Star Line would be on my radar at bigger prices. Thank you. And uh, Dave, two selections from you for the Paddy Power, please. Uh, I will take Balinagor, who I think you've got to catch first time up, uh, wherever he turns up, and Katenko, who I think is a horse of immense potential this year. Brilliant, thanks. Jeff, the uh, Paddy Power is coming up uh, next month. Not all bookmakers have yet uh, gone up with prices, but uh, you're one that has. Can you give us a brief uh, overview of the market and perhaps any uh, any money or lack of money that uh, that you've taken on the race? <laughs> well, lack of money would be the, the key word here, JP. I mean, it's it's far too early at the moment for any bookmaker to, to generally price up a race. We don't know what the intentions are of the major players. The weight's s- not out until the 29th. Of- Indeed, the weights are not out. We don't, we don't know what the... We, you, you, you know, we don't know what Porsche's plans are. A lot of these top stars, the Simon Six of this world, they've, they've all got their individual plans, their individual targets, and we're not party to that information right now. So in, in many respects, it's quite prudent for the bookmakers not to be getting too involved at this stage. Of course, Paddy Power have priced it up, and we have priced up some paper prices for the benefit of any of our clients. But I mean, if somebody was coming on to us and sort of saying they wanted the back horse to win 10 or 20 grand, that wouldn't be happening at this stage, because they would evidently know more than us. 
about the plans. So basically, a lot of bookmakers haven't priced it up, and, and that will remain the same until such time as we know, you know what the major players are, what their targets are early on in the season. It's a bit of money for uh, Ballon Agour. I think uh, Paddy Power even went to the trouble of issuing a press release around that. Uh, would you deem that to be significant at all? Yeah, Paddy Power are good at press releases. Um, now, I think Ballon Agour is one of these second season, ch- uh, season chasers. I think it came here at the festival. It ran a very moderate race. Perhaps it wasn't well or anything else, or not, not 100% at the, uh, the, at the time. It, it, it's the classic... Uh, is a classic uh, pose for this, but for this kind of race, you know, it'll be very low in the weight. I mean, Bally Nagore, off, off the top of my head, will be so some 18, 19 pounds lower rated than, say, a horse like Simon Sig. So it's going to come in the weight right at the very rock bottom. It'll be out of the handicap proper. And again, it depends on what you know what the major players. So this stable, isn't it? David and his father had a good record in the race over the years. Oh, they've had a good record in the race, and they're not beyond monkeying around with uh, with handicappers to you know to get them in off good good marks and good luck to them. Thank you.